John Carpenter is responsible for some of my favorite movies of all time. And it wasn't until I made Record Paradise that I became aware that he was responsible for a lot of the music in these movies. John Carpenter is a composer and a musician on top of being a legendary film director. And he put out an album through Sacred Bones called Lost Themes. And Lost Themes is an album filled with a bunch of music that didn't make it into some of his movies and some new stuff that he composed with his son in a band. And water just fell on my face. Oof, it's fucking cold out here, it's disgusting. The cover of this album is stark and powerful and it's just, it's exactly what it needs to be. It's minimal, but it's great. The design of having this uh, dark portrait of him split into two portions where it's kind of, it's suggesting something sinister because his head is his head's cut off. And if you like John Carpenter films, you can always almost imagine what the fuck is happening in this scenario. It's a cool, dark, minimalist photo of Carpenter where you can barely see his eyes. I want to know more about what went into the production of this photo and the design of this cover album and a little more about uh, John Carpenter's relation to this project as well. So I'm going to talk to Kyle Cassidy, the photographer who took this photo. Hey there, can you introduce yourself for the people? Sure, I'm Kyle Cassidy. I'm a photographer located in Philadelphia. I love the photo you took of John Carpenter. I saw a few of them on your site as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think that went really well. I was happy with the way that uh, that one came out, and there's a new album coming out that I did the, the picture for the cover for, too. And I think that one looks very good. Uh, Sacred Bones did a really terrific job with uh, the design on that. They, they both look really good. They obviously care a lot about, about the aesthetic and the production of everything and making it like absolutely perfect. Um, how did they come to you? How, how did this project fall in your, your lap? Well, I have a story, and I don't know if it's true or not. But I, um, well, What? The, the events, as I, as I described them, the timeline is true. I don't know if, if the motivation, if, if all of the things line up, the gears mesh the way that I think they do in my head. Uh, a couple of years ago, I somehow I was on the internet, you know, and I'm like, what? They made a remake of The Thing? How did I not know about this? Yeah. So yeah. I'm on the Twitters, you know, and I'm like, they made a remake of The Thing, and it's not on Amazon, and it's not on Netflix. And that's so why I was like, I'm going to go check out this store. And I went to a store, and then I went to another store, and finally, eventually they got it. And I'm like, I have a copy of it. And I posted selfies <laughs> of myself with this. And so I race home, and my wife and I start watching it, and I'm live tweeting it. And I don't know if you've seen the remake of The Thing, but it's terrible. I, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to. Like, no way. The, the, the thing, the original thing is, you know, obviously, it's, come on. Right. It's, you know, one of my favorite movies on Earth. And so... I'm live tweeting about how terrible this remake of the thing is. And 20 minutes, <laughs> 20 minutes into the movie, we took it out of the DVD player and threw it over the fence into a neighbor's yard. And I, I uh, <laughs> and the next day I get an email from uh, John and Sandy Carpenter saying, Oh, we were looking at your, your portraits and they're really great. And you should photograph John someday. And I was like, they were like, sitting in bed maybe like looking at the twitter saying is anybody talking about the thing and you know that's saw unreal. my thing and then checked out my website and like my cat so i don't know if that's actually how that <laughs> i haven't asked but um you know then i had an email from them the next day and um i was like oh, i'd love to photograph john and the magazine industry isn't really what it used to be i mean it used to be an editor would say hey we need you to go to california and photograph john carpenter and those magazines just don't really exist anymore. So I used Kickstarter, and I was like, hey, everybody, I have this opportunity to take a portrait of John Carpenter. You know, will you, like, sort of pre-buy a, a print of this? Mm. And Kickstarter came up with, you know, the, the money that a magazine would have come up with 15 years ago to send me to L.A. And so I did a portrait of uh, John. I actually did, uh, like, four different portraits of him, and there are some YouTube behind-the-scenes videos of those uh, awesome. those portrait shoots. And... Then when the time came for the album, um, John just suggested me to Sacred Bones. I don't know why. You know, L.A. is <laughs> full of photographers. So, um, but I felt very honored um, to come out and, and do that. And I had a terrific time, and I get along with them really well, and they're wonderful people. And so it just sort of fell in my lap, and I think it was uh, because I was obsessively tweeting that one night. Um, that you know, I ended, up, like, ended up doing these two album covers. 
the two things going on here that are really interesting to me just um showing that you were actually a, a, a deep fan of his work but also you 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 tweeted about it you used social media to talk about it. and i mean we we hear all these conversations all the time about like oh why would you broadcast what's going on and like you know the the pushback against social media but it's it's worth our time as as content creators um, I mean, it leads to awesome things happening like this. If you if you display what's happening in your life and how you actually feel about things. Yeah, I think there are two very important things in there. One is that I was saying these things. And two was that I had already created, as you said, content that sort of um, uh, made a, an invitation possible. Like if I was just mm. tweeting about liking the movie, they might have looked at my tweet and said, oh, that's nice. You know, he thinks the remake is not nearly as good as the original. But then, you know, I had whatever it was in my Twitter stream that convinced them to look at my portraits and uh, they liked what they saw. So it's it's an element of luck and an element of hard work. And those two things uh, work together to make, you know, success somehow. So you did the one you did the one session with the Kickstarter, and then there was a second session for, for the album. specifically. Right. Okay, so when you go into this, uh, when you went in for the second session, did you have the um, uh, image in your mind? Okay, it's going to be black and white, and it's going to be like the the sort of stark shadows. Like, how did you go to go into that? So S- Sacred Bones had come up with an idea um, before I got there. So they sent me a set of instructions of what they wanted, and they had um, they wanted John's face. Uh, and they wanted his hand, it was a black background, they wanted his hands covered in, like, a black Icarus blood substance. (laughs) Yeah. And so there was some Hollywood person out there who made this fake black Icarus blood substance, and John dipped his arms in it, and he, you know, (laughs) did the thing that they wanted, and I took a couple pictures, and... It, his hands just disappeared in the in the black background. And the really cool thing about the internet was I was just able to upload these photos, you know, right away to a, a private web page, and they were back at the Sacred Bones office looking at it, and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, time for plan B. And um, so I did a couple other things, and then John suggested these two lights on the side, um, which he remembered from the EC comic days when somebody is... You know, seeing something terrible, there's just these uh, bright lights on the side. And so we shot a few like that, and that's what they ended up using. And, and that lighting was, was John's idea. So for this, you did the shoot recently for the second album cover yes. that's coming out? Or? Yeah, so um, I went out for, I think I was there five days this last time. And we did a whole bunch of shoots uh, of John and the band and John by himself, and these are like press pictures and stuff like that, and we wanted enough that so that they could do exclusive pictures and say to some media outlet, you know, here's some exclusive pictures just for you. So we did a lot of uh, setups, and the one that's actually on the album cover was the last thing we did, and I was ready to leave, and I had remembered that I wanted to do something like that before, And I said, you know, can we just do one more shoot? It'll take 15 minutes. And so John came out, and um, that's actually um, lights through, like, a Venetian blind, like a window. So there's these shadows across his face. And I put a light outside, shined it through the blinds, and then sort of moved the blinds so that they made, you know, these particular shadows on his face. And I think we shot maybe 10 pictures, and it was... Uh, at the very end, right before my plane left, and then John went off to rehearsal, and I felt a little bad at the time asking John to come back and do, you know, more pictures. He's very, you know, very gracious about it. Yeah. Felt like, oh, you know, the guy's earned being able to, you know, sit home play video <laughs> games and, and watch basketball or whatever. Right. So I felt kind of bad of, about dragging him out, and then the fact that that was the one that ended up on the album cover, it was like, all right, cool. I mean, like, you, you have that instinct. I mean, it worked. Yeah, it came out pretty well. I was trying to, you know, think of lighting setups that told part of a story. So, for, but 
it's cool because the second one, like they they're kind of letting you like do, they I, I guess they they let you do whatever you wanted, right? It's your yeah. idea, so I guess if they make a third one, they're probably just gonna be like, please, please, Kyle, just just do whatever. You want. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Yeah, I I think really the key with that is just being easy to work with. Hmm. You know, and if if you're easy to work with, then you know, and your work is good, then you'll get the call back, right? So. I think I'm pretty easy going. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, Kyle, it's been awesome talking to you. Please tell people where they can find you. Oh, I'm at KyleCassidy.com, and I'm also Kyle Cassidy on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. Dude, I love your work. Thanks a lot for talking to me on this. It's It's been great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And it went to number one on the dance charts too. The first who's what? What club is this? <laughs> is this being played in? I, I want to go there. The crazy dark goth yeah, with the blood all over. Only album cover that I've ever done that went to number one anywhere. 